Okay. Um, dreams, visions of a prophet. Okay, first question is how do you tell that the Lord is speaking to you in a dream? Um, and, and can you tell? Uh, can you tell? Yes. <laughs> the Bible says, says, My sheep will know my voice. And the Lord is speaking there, talking about uh, the people that He has called. Uh, my sheep will know my voice, meaning that they'll understand when it's Him talking. How does He talk? In, in dreams and visions. And sometimes it just speaks like directly to your heart. And that's a spiritual gift that's called uh, discernment. And uh, um, there's a couple gifts there that is mentioned that he can speak to you through. Okay, uh, gift of knowledge, uh, tongues, interpretation of tongues. Anyways, okay, so it says, my sheep will know my voice. And, okay, but, okay, but how? When the Lord speaks to you in a dream, like it talks about in Amos 3, 7, it'll be a dream that you have no association with, a subject you have no association with. Meaning, <coughs> You haven't thought about this. You're not thinking about it. You haven't watched a movie about it. No one has talked to you about it. Some, sometimes you're not even aware of its existence <laughs> until you dream about it. And then you go and look and it's there. Like when the Lord told me about Isaiah 17. I had no idea what Isaiah 17 was. <clears throat> now, He didn't mention the chapter and verse, but he, he told me about the activity. And, of course, Isaiah 17 is mentioned in a couple of different places um, in the Bible. Uh, the war between Syria and Israel is mentioned a couple of Psalms 83, I think, is another place that talks about it. And then, and then there's other places other than that. But, um, <coughs> The Lord told me about a subject that I wasn't even aware of that was in the Bible. As a matter of fact, the Lord has talked to me several times about things I didn't know was in the Bible. The first time that He said something like that, it took me 12 years to find it in the Bible, you know. And a lot of times the dreams are very intense, very scary. I dreamed that, uh, one night I dreamed that uh, I was hired to go into this town and to pick up dead bodies. We went in this building, went this building, we went up this side and down that side. And these were very tall buildings, 30, 40 stories high. And we got up this one building and we went out on the outer, outer level where like the gravel area is, you know, where the, the top of the building. And <coughs> We were looking around for dead bodies, and we couldn't find no bodies in this town, dead or alive, in this city. It was a huge city. And me and a couple of buddies there was, you know, hired to go in and do that. And I looked at my buddy, and I said, there is no dead bodies here. And about that time, that wall fell out of that uh, building, the part that went on up. The wall fell out. And there was a, there was dead bodies there, a hundred feet high. I mean, in, in those bodies was every kind of person in the world was in those dead bodies. There was the intellect. There was the poor man. There was the atheist. There was, the, you, you know, like. I don't think I don't think I could I saw anybody that I could identify as a Christian though. Um, 
I saw people wearing glasses. And I saw little people. I saw big people. I saw different colors of people. And every, just every kind of person in the world. Scared the daylights out of me. I woke up and wrote every preacher I knew. You know, <laughs> Well, not every preacher, but I wrote some. Uh, I think I wrote a couple of preachers. I said, look, something bad's going to happen. <laughs> you know, and so it was a very intense dream. And I didn't know that at that time, I didn't know that Ezekiel 38 and 39 said that, <clears throat> I can't remember the exact verse, but in there talking about that war, said that they will hire people to go in and pick up dead bodies uh, throughout the land it says and, and for seven months they'll be picking up dead bodies for seven months and it says something about seven years picking up the machinery that is that will be uh, destroyed in that war okay so anyway you know and when they wrote that three thousand years ago whatever I bet they were thinking, what in the world are they going to have in that day that it's going to take seven years to pick up? Because when that was written, you could have easily cleaned up a, a, from a war with, uh, within a couple of months, no matter what war. <clears throat> but today it's plausible that it will take seven years to pick up the mess that's going to be made from Ezekiel 30 and 39. Because it says that all those countries around Israel will come after them, and it says that they will, um, like a cloud coming across the ground, it says they'll come out, uh, out after them. And it says within a 12-hour period, God's going to destroy all those countries. Well, there's the, there's the heaps of dead bodies, and there's the heaps of machinery. In 12 hours, God Himself is going to destroy all those countries. But you know what? We talk about this, and they they pay no attention to it. Uh, some lady says, "If you don't stop talking about this stuff," she said, "You're going to cause it to happen." I said, "Look," I said, "I said those people don't believe my Bible any more than I believe theirs. Me talking about it's not going to change anything," you know. So, and, and our beliefs is, is quite different from theirs. See, and the only difference is that we have things to back our belief up with. You know, we have, we have um, activity, we have spiritual activity, recent spiritual activity. This is a living body, this thing lives. And that, that's how you can tell when God is speaking because there's life in His words. There's life in it. And not only that, but things happen. The Lord gave me a dream about um, Arnold Schwarzenegger when he when he um, cheated on his wife and he went out with all with those how many or ever how many women it was. The Lord spoke to me about that in a dream and I I misinterpreted it. I think I've got it I've got it written down on where is it? <clears throat> yeah, I've got it written on Facebook or something. I talked about it a little bit there. And I interpreted it as homosexual activity, but it was actually self-gratifying is what God was saying. So, <clears throat> and the look. And, of course, it came to happen about six months after the Lord told me that. But here's another one. Then the last, I'll get, get this done here. The Lord... Uh, a recent property a dream I had last night or not before there was a man who was supposed to be going salmon fishing and instead of salmon fishing he's going for sexual gratification and he will be caught by his wife or his mate I'm not sure if this lady's married to him but she could very well could be but now this is going to be somebody that's in the public eye. The Lord usually don't speak to me about folks just right around me. It's usually people that's in the public eye, and and uh, they and they will have a a 
a specimen of his of his sperm in a bag that will prove his guilt. Okay, that's a prophecy. <clears throat> Don't know how long this is going to take to come to pass, but that's what the Lord has, has said to me recently. And do I understand it totally? No, I don't. All I know is what I saw in the dream. And the, a lot of things in the Bible, those prophets didn't understand either, you know. So, okay. So this is how you can tell that the Lord is speaking to you. Um, just go back and play the video a couple times. <laughs> Listen and learn, okay. God bless. Thank you for listening. We'll see you again next time with another great subject right here on Crossing the Middle Ministry. God bless.